We have a federal subsidy program known as the Universal Service Fund, for instance, of several billion dollars that we administer every single year, the purpose of which is supposed to be to get more digital infrastructure, to get broadband out there into the countryside. For too many years, in my view at least, uh, those funds were used to subsidize parts of the country that already had service. We've changed that to focus on unserved parts of the country. Uh, for example, in the first full month that I had the chance to set the agenda for the agency, we got across the finish line on a bipartisan basis, I might add, two key reforms. One was the Connect America Fund, uh, which was mentioned earlier by Mr. Rice. This is a $2 billion program over the next 10 years that's going to get fixed broadband into parts of the country that don't currently have it. And to me, it was important to get all of our companies, all of our technologies competing for these funds. Uh, personally, I do not care whether it's an electric co-op, a rural telco, a cable company, a satellite company, a wireless company. I want all of them to have a strong incentive to compete for your dollars and to provide you connectivity, and we're starting to do that. Now, the second major reform we adopted was what's called the Mobility Fund, Phase 2. And this is a $4.5 billion program that over the next decade is going to bring 4G LTE to all parts of the country that don't currently have it. You know, I was struck as we were driving yesterday from Harrisburg, Illinois, down here to West Plains, how often on the highway I would look at my phone and I would see one bar, and sometimes no bars at all. There simply wasn't any service. That is unacceptable to me. And if it's that way on a major highway, think about what it's like when you're on the farm. Think about what it's like when you're in a rural area trying to have your kids do your homework. That's just not the way we want things to be. And so over the next 10 years, we are going to get broadband built out on wireless bases to all parts of the country that don't currently have it. So federal subsidies, that's one tool in the toolbox. The other tool is regulatory reform. One of the things I've been impressed by is how many rules and regulations there are to stand in the way of companies being able to do business and to build, up, build a business case for deploying broadband infrastructure. So we're starting to change that. For the wireline companies, for example, whether it's an electric co-op or a rural telco, we want to have the ability to gain access to the utility poles, uh, to the conduit that lies under the ground, to have the maximum incentive to lay the fiber and to deploy the other uh, infrastructure that's necessary for wireline broadband. On the wireless side, too, we want the, to make it easier to deploy the big towers and the small cells and all the other guts of a wireless network that are critical. Uh, we talked about Spectrum, Mr. Collins mentioned, too. Spectrum is a major issue for us. We want all the fixed wireless and the cellular guys to have the spectrum that they need to deliver that high-speed connectivity. And so we're getting, we just finished an incentive auction to get more 600 megahertz out there. We're working actively on five gigahertz, which Mr. Collins mentioned. And actually now there's a very high spectrum, about 24 gigahertz, that is now usable because of wireless innovation for mobile broadband. So uh, uh, t stay tuned. Uh, it's a really exciting time for wireless, and we want to get as much spectrum out there in the commercial marketplace uh, for folks to be able to take advantage of. The final piece of it, after federal subsidies and regulatory reform, is working with our elected officials. And I said, uh, Congressman Smith has been a leader in this effort, and uh, there are many others like him who are focused on rural broadband uh, as being on the national uh, map. And one of the things I've encouraged is that for the White House and for Congress, to the extent they consider an infrastructure plan, uh, to make sure that broadband is a part of that conversation, to me at least, the roads and bridges are incredibly important, but if in the 21st century we're talking about an infrastructure plan that doesn't include digital infrastructure, broadband, then that's an opportunity missed. And so I was encouraged by the President's remarks a few months ago that uh, broadband would be a part of this plan, and I certainly hope that Congress uh, takes the same approach. Now, the other thing I rolled out a few uh, months ago, last September, uh, before the election, because I didn't want this to be a political issue, was a proposal for what I call gigabit opportunity zones. Uh, broadband is an issue not just in rural America, but also in low-income urban America. I've seen parts of this country, inner city Cleveland and Detroit, for instance, that just have the same problems that many of you see here in West Plains and in rural Missouri. And so I, I got to thinking, well, what if we created a greater incentive for companies, big and small, to invest in these communities? And so my idea was to create gigabit opportunity zones, modeled after what former HUD Secretary Jack Kemp called empowerment zones in the 1980s. The idea here was if Congress created tax incentives for broadband providers, big and small, using whatever technology uh, to invest in either a, a low-income area, whether it's a rural area or an urban area, of whatever size, as so long as the median income in that area was 75% or less of the national median, uh, then we would get more infrastructure built out in these places. And I'm pleased to say that Senators Capito and Coons 
and the United States Senate, a Republican from West Virginia, a Democrat from Delaware, have sponsored legislation that captures these proposals. Uh, similarly, in the House, Congressman Doug Collins from Georgia has introduced legislation as well. A very small idea, and I know it gets lost in the big stream of issues that we're always thinking about, but to me, this would really make a dent, I think, in the problem of the digital divide. 